Today we're going to check out Emotiva's XPA11 multi-channel amplifier. What's up guys? Before we kick off the video, if you're a home theater enthusiast and want to keep up on what's new in the audio and video space, then hit the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Emotiva sent over their space saving 11 channel amp. I say space savings because they jammed 11 channels of power in there. So if you're setting up a Dolby Atmos or DTS X home theater setup, you don't have to fill your room with a bunch of amplifiers. So let's go ahead, get this thing unboxed and we'll set it up in the home theater and I'll give you some of my thoughts on the performance. Inside, we get the birth certificate and an accessories box with the power and a trigger cable. The XPA11 is an 11 channel amplifier and retails for $2,000. It is made to order direct from Emotiva. Taking a look up front, you'll see the classic Emotiva design. It's got a brushed black aluminum fascia with a window that's got LED indicators that light up when powering on. Below that is the power button and a call out badge lower left, 11 3.4. That's three single channel high power modules and four stereo power modules. The XPA is a fairly large amp coming in at 17 inches wide by eight inches high by 19 inches deep. It also weighs a surprisingly light 53 pounds for packing in so many channels. This lighter weight is due to Emotiva switch mode power supply or SMPS and rail modulating class H operation. The amplifier at lower volumes will operate on lower supply voltage, but as input levels increase, it can switch instantly to a higher voltage rail. This keeps the amp running efficiently without much wasted heat and energy while keeping weight down since you don't have to have huge heat sinks. This Class H design is said to maintain Class AB sound quality. Around back, you can see three high powered modules in the center, which are 300 watts each, flanked by two stereo power modules on either side. Each of the stereo power modules has two channels each for a total of eight channels. These will output 65 watts a channel into eight ohms. I should also mention that the XPA line of amps are configurable. So if you were to buy an XPA with three high powered modules, you can always add more modules in the future as your needs and budget increases. It's an awesome way to future proof your purchase. These modules, however, aren't user replaceable. So you will have to send the amplifier back to Emotiva or send them to an authorized service center to perform the upgrade. For connections, you have your choice of either RCA or XLR inputs. Keep in mind the XLRs are not fully differential, so you aren't getting a true balanced input. You will have to step up to their DR line for that. On the right side are the trigger, power input, and master power switch. There's also a switch to turn off the LED lights on the front. Now depending on which input you use, RCA or XLR, you'll have to select it by using the selection button or the toggle switch. All right, now that it's in my audio rack, I've got this paired with a Rotel RSP1576 Dolby Atmos DTS-X Pre-Pro. To test out the type of power we're gonna get from the amp, I've run all 11 speakers full range with no bass management. So my subwoofers will be turned off for all listening sessions. For speakers, we'll be using the Arendel Sound 1723 Monitor STHX speakers. If you've never heard of the brand, I'll leave a link to our review at the end of the video, and you can always check in the description for links to everything that we've mentioned in this video. Now just to reiterate, the front three channels would be getting 300 watts each, while the remaining eight channels would be getting 65 watts each. First up is my go-to Atmos soundtrack, Aquaman. This movie has got some ridiculous bass and will definitely reveal any shortcomings in your speaker's low frequency response. The first thing I noticed was how robust the front soundstage was. There was excellent immediacy with how tactile the mid-range is, you know, meaning it's got some hard punch. Vocals sounded hefty, specifically male vocals, and female vocals had a nice air about it. If you listen to some of the underwater vocal inflections, even though they're clearly digitally altered, its representation was clean and precise. I've listened to this scene on some receivers and entry-level amps, and there can be some harshness on lower AVRs with lower power, especially if you're running your speakers full range. That's one of the great things about having a lot of power on hand. Even though you most likely won't be using a full 300 watts, you will have enough clean power to render as much dynamics as you need, whether it's a quiet atmospheric moment or a loud bass heavy action scene. And speaking of bass, there were a lot of times my front speakers were producing enough low energy to almost make me think my subwoofers were turned on. Now I suppose if you've got bigger speakers with bigger drivers, it could pose more of a challenge for this amp, but for my situation, the XPA11 delivered enough power to push my front channel's bass response to the max. Bass was fast and articulate and had great slam. 
Now, of course, it's not all about bass, but how clean it can handle the quieter, subtler moments. And this amp did a fine job at reproducing those subtle details. I tried this with some scenes from A Quiet Place, which I always throw in to test how good detail and sound stage is with pre-pros and amplifiers. It's a first-rate Atmos mix with tons of atmosphere. The front stage had great presence, although I felt it was a little more forward sounding than some other amps I've had in here recently. That's not a knock to the Emotiva, it's just that it's revealing a lot of details in soundtracks and bringing them front and center, which isn't a bad thing. There was enough three-dimensionality that pushed my speaker's sound back about a foot or so back to where they're actually physically located. So even though I felt a forwardness to the sound, there seemed to be enough breathing room between me and the virtual soundstage. Now let's talk about the eight other channels. I know 65 watts doesn't sound like much compared to the 300 watts that we're getting up front, and yes, there is an audible difference. Keep in mind now that I normally use an amplifier that puts out 200 watts into each of my surround channels, so I was using that as a reference point. My surround speakers are a little larger than most, I think, and they can handle bass down to about 40 hertz or so. The Emotiva did a commendable job at running the surround's full range, but at reference or closer to reference levels, I did feel I was getting a more shallower sound, while my other amp was still able to retain a wider depth of field above and around me. That being said, at normal listening levels, the XPA sounded just as spacious. But with some more heavily mixed soundtracks with a lot of surround information, my surround channels were a little less impactful as far as mid-range and lower bass response. Now if you're running your surround channels crossed over at 80Hz or whatever you prefer, and you're using a subwoofer, then all of this is kind of a moot point. As far as detail in the surrounds, I thought they were fine but not as revealing as the front channels, and I thought there was a little disconnect there. If all channels were belting out 300 watts each, I think that'd be a perfect combo. But then we're talking about several separate amplifiers or one gigantic one, and this amp is all about that one-stop solution. Now before we wrap up this video, we all use different equipment in our spaces, and everything that I've described in this review are my opinions on how it sounded with my equipment in my room. You could very well hear different things than I did, and I'm sure you would. With that said, who's the XPA11 for? Well, if you've got limited space or just can't fathom the idea of having two or three amplifiers sitting in your shelf, then this might be the solution for you. I was very impressed in the sound quality from the three high output channels, so I mean if you're running with some big towers up front, then this amp shouldn't have any issues running any of your speakers. My speakers were belting out some killer bass, and the thing is clean, quiet, and one of the most detailed amps I've heard at this price. The other eight channels, again, I know was a bit of a compromise so you could fit 11 channels in a single chassis, but it worked great when I was using a subwoofer, although for me personally, I wouldn't go running the surround channels full range. If you've got big towers up front and small speakers filling in the rest of your home theater, then this amp should be a perfect fit. Where else can you get 11 channels for two grand? It's kind of a steal if you think about it. And remember, an amplifier is one of those things that you buy once and don't upgrade for many years. It's not like a receiver or a television set where there's always some new standard right around the corner. Just save your spare change and get the best amplifier that you can afford and forget about it for the next decade or so. Well, all right, guys, that's all I've got. Let us know in the comments if you've got the XPA11 and how does it perform in your home theater. If you want to grab this or any Emotiva amplifier, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content giveaways, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys again in the next one.